Magandang tahali Pilipinas, gaya ng nauna kong sinabi si Presidente Duterte ang pangunahing arkitekto ng ating pulisyang panlabas. Careful, calculated at calibrated ang foreign policy ng ating Pangulo pagdating sa West Philippine Sea. Totoo ng Pilipinas ay may territorial at maritime claims at entitlement sa West Philippine Sea kasama na po ang mga isla na ating inaangkin. Ngunit totoo rin ang ating claims at entitlement ay pinagtatalunan or disputed ng ibang mga bansa. Dahil dito, ayon sa international law, we have to promote our claims and entitlements and we manage and resolve our disputes through peaceful and legal means kasama na po dyan yung paghahain ng mga diplomatic protests. Lahat ng mga ito ay nagsisimula at nagtatapos sa negosasyon. Kaugnayin ito, hindi tinatalikuran ni Presidente ang ating claims at entitlements. Ang totoo, ang Pangulo at ang kanyang administrasyon ay paulit-ulit na sinasabi ito sa bilateral talks kasama ang China at sa multilateral fora katulad po ng UN General Assembly. Hindi nakakatulong ang mga outbursts po ng dating Supreme Court Justice Carpio at dating DFA Secretary Del Rosario. Magiging ang kanilang demand na hardline all or nothing policies na ang resulta gaya ng turo ng kasaysayan ay walang mararating o hindi kaya o kung kaya ay mag-udyok ng gera. Ito mismo ang iniiwasan po ng ating Pangulo. Dapat uh, alam ito ng dalawang opisyal, lalo na ni dating Supreme Court Justice Carpio na isang abogado at si dating DFA Secretary na naging top diplomat natin. Itigil na nila ang kanilang panilinlang sa taong bayan sa kanilang mga illegal, impractical at irresponsabling pananalita. Hindi sila nakakatulong. Hayaan na nila si Presidente na may foresight, information at mandato ay sa ating saligang batas na gumawa ng sound foreign policy decisions. Sa usaping bakuna naman po tayo. Dumating nung Sabado, auno ng Mayo, ang 15,000 doses ng Sputnik V sa Pilipinas. Ang Gamalea or Sputnik V, ang pangalawang government-procured vaccine na dumating sa bansa. Ang ibig sabihin nito ay mayroon na tayong tatlong brands sa ating vaccine supply inventory. Magiging pilot run itong unang batch ng 15,000 doses para sa paghahanda natin sa pagdating ng 485,000 doses ngayong buwan ng Mayo. Kailangan natin ito para ma-assess ang logistics capability natin, lalo na highly sensitive vaccine ng SPOC 5 na kinakailangan ma-store sa negative 18 degrees. Mamaya ay makakasama po natin si Dr. Nina Gloriani, the OST Vaccine Expert Panel, head para sa iba pang mga detalye. COVID-19 updates naman po tayo. Nasa 8,346 na po ang mga bagong kaso ng COVID-19 sa bansa ayon sa DOH May 2 case bulletin. Patuloy ang pagtaas ng mga gumagaling. Nasa 966,080 na po ang bilang na nakarecover samantalang nasa 17,431 ang biniwiin ng buhay. Nananatiling mababa po ang ating case fatality rate na nasa 1.65%. Ang world average po ay 2.1%. Patuloy ang pagbaba ng aktibong kaso ng coronavirus base sa datos ng DOH ng COVID cases sa buong bansa. Ito ay kukumparahin ang mga bagong kaso noong April 25, May 1, kumpara noong April 18 to 24. So tignan po natin ito. No? Um, kung titignan nyo po, eh, talaga naman pong ang average numbers noong April 18 to 24 ay 9 9,068.42 at ngayon po ang average cases ay 8,205.7 Usapin naman po um, unahin natin po ang NCR sapat na baho o kulang na baho ang ating mga kamas sa ating mga hospital unahin po natin ang NCR ang ICU beds po natin ay 70% utilized. Ang isolation beds natin ay 50% utilized lamang. Ang ating ward beds ay 62% utilized. Ang ventilators na utilized ay 54% lamang. Sa buong Pilipinas, 64% po ang ICU beds na utilized. Ang isolation beds ay 45% utilized. Ang ating ward beds ay 51% utilized. Ang ating ventilators ay 43% utilized. Sa iba pang mga bagay, ngayong Araw at rest ng Mayo, ating gunugunita ang World Press Freedom Day. Sabi ng Pangulo, ang selebrasyon ngayong taon, and I quote, affirms the Philippines' commitment to protect press freedom as a public good and as an indispensable requirement of a vibrant democracy. 
Samantala, mariin kinukun din na ng Pangulo ang pagpatay kay Mr. Mariano Antonio Quid III, Consultant for Hospital Operations ng Negros Oriental at dating Chief of Staff ni Congressman Jules Ledesma. Inatasan ni Presidente ng NBI na imbestigahan ang pagpatay na ito at parusahan ng may sala at mabigyan ng katarungan ang pamilya ng biktima. Nakikiramay po ang Presidente sa pamilya at sa mga taga-Negros dahil alam po namin na Mahal po itong si Mr. Kui sa buong probinsya ng Negros. Dito po nagtatapos ang ating presentasyon. Makakasama natin ngayon po ang ating Philippine Ambassador to India, Ramon Bagat Singh, ating Treatment Star, Yusek Lipodo Vega, at Dr. Nina Gloriani, DOST Vaccine Expert Panel Head. Unahin ko na po si Ambassador uh, Bagat Singh. Ambassador, good morning to you in India, if it's morning in India. Pero tatlo po ang aking uh, katanungan. Unang-una po, Inaasahan po ng uh, taong bayan ang 40 million na vo Novavax. Dahil po sa mga pangyayari sa India, dapat bang asahan pa ang 40 million po na Novavax? O ito po ay apektado doon sa deklarasyon ng mga opisyales sa India na nagbabalawal, panandalian na export ng mga bakuna. Pangalawa po, Um, kailan po tingin ninyo magkakaroon ng repatriation dito sa Pilipinas sa mga Pilipino dahil yung travel ban po natin ay sako po mga Pilipino na kailangan po magkaroon ng ugnayan sa panig ng IATF at ng embahada kung magkakaroon po ng repatriation flight at pangatlo, marami pong nagtatanong paano ba po tayo pwedeng tumulong sa India dahil ang nangyari naman sa India pwede mangyari kahit kaninong bansa The floor is yours, Ambassador Ramon Dondon Bagat Singh Uh, gandang tanghali sa inyo dyan, uh, Secretary Roque at sa ating mga kababayan. Salamat sa pagkataon na ito na ibinigay mo sa akin para magpaliwanag ng ilang mga bagay na iyong natukoy. Uh, Unang-una, tungkol sa vaccines po, uh, under negotiations, uh, dalawang vaccine po ang uh, pinag-usapan dito. Ang una yung COVAXIN uh, na nagkaroon na ng EUA from the FDA. Uh, and hopefully matapos na ibang mga regulatory requirements. No? Uh, we hope that uh, these uh, requirements can be expedited by the regulatory authorities there in the Philippines so that it can be uh, be brought there. So, 8 million po yung co-vaccine. Co And once uh, uh, all the approvals are in place, uh, they can uh, send it there uh, within one month. Yung uh, 30 million ng uh, uh, Novavax, Uh, this is a tie-up with Serum Institute of India, which is the largest uh, vaccine manufacturer in the world, and uh, Novavax, which is an American company. The brand name of the vaccine is Icovavax. Uh, Secretary Galvez was here last month, and uh, he was able to successfully negotiate a supply agreement between the government of the Philippines and, uh, and uh, Serum Institute. This is $30 million, and the scheduled delivery there is the third or fourth quarter of this year. Now, uh, uh, you mentioned about the uh, ban on uh, exports of vaccines. No? The, the Indian government has not announced any ban on the export of vaccines. Uh, but we still have to get approval from them in order for us to uh, send it to the Philippines. So, upon discussions with these uh, importers, uh, basta maliwanag ang uh, approvals just sa bansa natin uh, they, they can bring it there at, at the soonest possible time uh, at sana makatulong naman yan yung co-vaccine po is, is a tripartite agreement in other words uh, some LGUs ordered some uh, corporations ordered to go negosyo uh, and the third party would be the supplier so once that is settled uh, it will be there The 30 million of uh, Covavax is between the government and Serum Institute. So it's up to the, our government uh, to determine how this will be distributed. Now, we are aware that there are three phases of distribution, no? essential services, and secondly, yung mga age group, and thirdly, yung uh, mga bata. The same ex experience is being done here in India. So hindi po naman sila nakukulang, the vaccination drive is ongoing, and now they are into phase three, yung mga 18 years old pataas. On the repatriation, uh, we are uh, very much aware of uh, the difficulties, no? logistically difficult for us to send our Kababayan so because of the travel ban, not only in our country, but in other countries as well. So even without us issuing a travel ban, there is a de facto travel ban because if you take a commercial flight, the 
the areas that uh, the countries that you will uh, have to transit uh, do not allow Indian passengers. So de facto, we, we cannot send them home. So we will wait for clearances, and uh, hopefully once these clearances are uh, secured, and the ban is lifted in these countries and in our country, uh, we can send some of our kababayans here. Uh, at, uh, hindi pa naman ganun karami, no? I mean, if we compare to what happened to <coughs> Italy, <coughs> excuse me, Italy and uh, the Middle East last year, hundreds yan. Dito, hindi pa abot ng uh, sandaan. Uh, my count right now is about 50 only. Uh, but uh, each each number counts, you know, each person counts. If they want to go home, we will do everything uh, to do so. And we have the assurance of Secretary Luxin at the appropriate time that uh, we can send our kababayan soon. Um, and then uh, thirdly, how can the Philippines help? I think President uh, Duterte has already sent a letter of solidarity and support to the Prime Minister here. Uh, other countries, there are at least 40 countries that have... Uh, uh, donated uh, oxygen uh, equipment uh, and other ventilators and other medical equipment to to India. Uh, Pinakamalakas siguro pwedeng ibigay natin sa kanila ay ang ating dasal, ang ating pakikisa, ang ating solidarity at uh, uh, pakikipagkapwa, no? uh, service to humanity. That's the best I think that we can do under the circumstances right now. Because uh, and the whole world is aware also that we have our challenges back. In Manila, uh, maganda yung report na ginawa ninyo in so far as hospital beds are concerned. Because right here, it's extremely difficult to get the uh, hospital beds. And uh, extremely difficult to get uh, the oxygen needed by the patients. No? So, uh, we, we are fortunate in that sense that we have not, and I hope we will never reach that saturation point, but we, we will not have all the healthcare services required of our Kababayans who, who get stricken with uh, uh, with COVID because right now here you have 19 and a half million Indians who are affected, 215,000 deaths. Uh, but uh, on the other side of the coin, you have 155 million Indians that have been vaccinated. So I hope I have uh, answered those three points that you have raised, uh, Secretary Rocky. Maraming salamat, Ambassador. So ulitin ko lang po, wala kayong impormasyon na uh, maantala yung pagdating sa Pilipinas sa third and fourth quarter ng mga bakuna na magagaling sa India? Uh, as far as the Indian side is concerned, uh, COVAX in Bharat Biotech, they have given a firm commitment that once uh, all the papers are expedited on the Philippine end, then uh, they, they can deliver that 8 million. Ang Serum Institute naman, na uh, September pa ang kanilang planned rollout, so last part of the third quarter and the fourth quarter. Uh, so, again, Yung mga regulatory requirements coming from the U.S., uh, WHO, etc. Once that is secured, uh, wala naman issue. And I don't think that the Indian government will give us a, a hard time getting authority or approval for the export to the Philippines. Maraming salamat, Ambassador Bagat Singh. Kasama po natin ang ating treatment sir, Yusek Lipodo Vega. Uh, sir, nakita po natin sa datos na... 70% pa rin ang ating ICU beds. Pero napansin ko po dito na sa ICU beds, ang nakasulat pa rin ay 700,000 total beds pa lamang tayo. Uh, 700 pala, sorry po. 700 total beds pa lang, no? Pero kinakailangan po siguro i-update natin to para bumaba yung percentage utilization dahil ang alam ko po, yung 179 na kinumit ng uh, private at public hospitals as a result of the PhilHealth uh, payment at saka yung 120 na additional ICU beds na naging operational only last April 23 sa tala po, no? So, hindi pa kasama sa 700 na ginagamit natin as basis for the computation for 70% utilized. At kapag naisama po yan, eh, bababa talaga yung ating utilization pati na ICU beds and looking at our utilization of isolation beds, ward beds, and ventilators, mukhang we are approaching the... Uh, Moderate, no? Moderate pa lang. Dahil 60% po ang moderate, no? So, magkano na baho talaga? Ilan na baho talaga yung ating ICU beds ngayon? Dahil lang nakasulat po sa datos ng DOH hanggang ngayon is 700 total beds lang po. The floor is yours, Yusek Vega. Nakamute, uh, Yusek Vega. Nakamute. Uh, good afternoon, as po, Kari, and uh, most especially to uh, Ambassador Bakat Singh in India right now. And to all the listeners and viewers, uh, first, uh, allow me to um, uh, mention that uh, 
for the last uh, two months, talagang inahabol natin ang bed allocation for the COVID uh, patients that we have here in NCR Region 3 and Region 4A. And so far, our strategy really was uh, to open up the uh, field modular hospitals na ginawa ho natin last uh, November and uh, make sure also, the second is uh, make sure that uh, the hospitals uh, will have to increase their allocation of beds lalong lalo na sa intensive care units because uh, this will directly impact with our case fatality rates. So for the last two months, oh, we've been uh, meeting with the different chief of hospitals and I've, I'm pleased to report, uh, although this has to be uh, uh, encoded in the uh, uh, data tracker that we have, we already have encoded, uh, we have already ad added 1,148 a total. Uh, before, as uh, so of March, we only had 781 na, uh, ICU beds. Now we have a total of 1,148 or a difference of 367. So malaking luwang puto, and uh, that's the reason why umaba na rin ng konti ang ating intensive care units compared with last month na umaabot talaga sa high-risk category. Ito yung mga naabot between 78 and 80%. Now, it's hovering between 70 to 71%. Kasi din, ang alam naman, intindi naman natin na mga intensive care patients do have a longer uh, turnaround time. Sa isolation naman, isolation na put, isolation beds naman natin, we also increase the hospital beds. Kasi alam natin na there are also moderate cases na nagaano din uh, they have to uh, they are increasing because of the uh, uh, increased number of positive cases at saka meron ding step down ang serious patients to moderate bed to uh, to an isolation bed uh, to consider them as moderate so nakapagdagdag ho tayo uh, ng uh, 554 beds compared with last month so itong ginagawa po natin is uh, making sure na yung intensive care unit natin hindi aabot sa critical risk position wherein it would be very hard for the healthcare workers and even the patients to access and get uh, specialized care. So at the moment, uh, Spock Harry, I think uh, we are still continuing uh, the number of beds to be allocated for the intensive care so far. Since last month, we were able to uh, uh, ramp up 367 uh, of these uh, intensive care unit beds in the different hospitals and aside from the field modulars. And secondly, we also wrapped up the isolation beds. So we are still continuing though ng ating um, pagplano na kailangan talaga madagdagan ng ating uh, health capacity. So that is the reason why uh, nagbukas na rin, uh, nag nagpo-construct na rin yung 110 uh, modular field hospitals sa lung center and another 220 sa national mental hospital. These are potential specialized units or intensive care. Bukas, oh, bubuksan na rin natin ng modular hemodialysis ng um, national kidney. Ito kasi yung problema noon, hindi malaman kung saan dadalahin yung mga uh, kidney patients natin na nagda-dialyze since nagko-close yung mga freestanding dialysis at saka nagka-clog na sa NKI, NKTI at saka sa Jose Rodriguez Memorial Hospital. So this is the reason na binuksan din namin, uh, bubuksan din natin tomorrow yung uh, modular hemodialysis, especially for COVID, sa NKI, capable of handling mga 25 beds, pero kung 3 ships siya, abot na mga 60 patients per day. So ito yung malaking ano po, uh, increase uh, sa number of uh, allocated beds natin uh, and very specific for COVID-19. Back to you, Hari. Maraming salamat, Yusek Vega. Uh, Yusek, kailan po kaya ma-adjust yung mga datos ng DOH to reflect the additional beds. Kasi po sa mga panahon ngayon, eh, may mga kritiko nagsasabi na we're even worse off than India daw. No? So kinakailangan mapakita natin yung tamang utilization rate, lalong-lalo na ng mga ICU beds natin. So itong figure po ng uh, DOH, kailan kaya nila papalitan na sa hanggang ngayon po, 700 pa lang ang ICU beds natin sa Metro Manila at 1.9 1,900 lang all over the Philippines. No? Dapat po mapalitan na yan. Kasi sa aking initial computation, kung, na, kung magiging 1,000 ang total beds sa Metro Manila, ang percent utilization natin ay bababa to... Um, hindi ko na-compute. <laughs> Pero I'm sure it will go down to around 60% or even less. No? So, kailan po kaya i-amend ng, uh, ng DOH itong mga total beds available for purposes of computing utilization rate? 
Uh, actually, ginagawa na yan, Sir Kari. Uh, in fact, last week, uh, nag-usap na kami sa mga hospital chiefs. Ano? Kasi itong uh, pagbago nito, kailangan po nila i- uh, i-manage sa ilang kanilang uh, data bed tracker na sa, na sa kanila. So we have informed yung mga data managers po nila mm -hmm. ng lahat ng mga hospitals and sa NCR to uh, be consistent in the number of beds and the number of severe cases that they have. So ultimately, oh, ang may palabas namin na uh, out of uh, since last month na meron tayong 781, we have already expanded the allocated beds for ICU to 1,148 or an increase of 367 beds po, uh, Secretary. So sana po ma-reflect na ito sa official datos ng baka ma'am niya uh, nasa 50% uh, utilization rate na lang po tayo na ICU beds. No? One last point po, nung uh, ako po mismo ay naging uh, biktima ng COVID, ay uh, syempre po maraming nagsasalita na hindi raw makapasok ang mga pasyente sa ospital. Pero ang katotohanan, kung titignan po natin ang datos, sapat naman po mga kama natin, no? pati sa ICU beds. At ang sinasabi po namin palagi dito sa ating press briefing, dapat tumawag doon sa One Hospital Command Center. So ito po, dagdial kami sa 155. DOH protects your personal information in accordance to the rules and regulations set by the Data Privacy Act. So ibig sabihin, nakukontak naman po yung 1555 na hotline po natin, no? So ang ang uh, tanong ko lang po is uh, nung mga panahon po right after my covid nagdagdag po ng 50 ang uh, call centers ang MMDA at plano pong magdagdag din ng 50 ang DOH no na nakapagdagdag na ba ho tayo ng 100 na call operators para sa ating uh, hotline for the one covid hotline Ah uh, ah uh, uh, thank you ano pero alam mo sa uh, itong uh, one covid referral center natin or one of the one hospital command uh, kailangan talaga i-ma-update yung uh, human resource at saka pangalawa yung technology so sa human resource naman uh, naka-handle kami ng interviews siguro may mga 85 uh, uh, nakapasaho sa interview for possible deployment na po yan for uh, uh, calls for the ano uh, receiving uh, or call agents for the one hospital command uh, pangalawa po, uh, nag-i-improve na rin yung aming up upgrades sa aming telecommunication kasi naka-hook up na kami sa DICT at saka sa PLDT po. Pinigyan kami ng managed services through subscription na mag-open ng more lines. So yung 1555 po, uh, yan ang initial namin. Pag, pero pag uh, once na ma-connect na talaga yung aming uh, bagong hotline number na direct na sa uh, One Hospital Command, uh, ay magiging 1554 na yan. Pero we will announce it later because uh, it still needs the, the connection. Pero as of the moment, we're trying to improve our our function, our services po, uh, to make sure that we will be able to, uh, be, uh, you know, uh, head, get the, uh, connect the patients with us and do the, pros do the um, coordinated and referral to Oplan Kalinga or to the different hospitals. Ngayon pong anong, uh, month na to, uh, we have already uh, made an agreement with PICC na lilipat ako kami doon because the MMDA complex is becoming uh, small for the number of workers and the number of uh, uh, new gadget, gadgets that we have for the, uh, for the command. So siguro po mga middle of May, we will transfer and we will be able to provide you a better service and a better functionality. Because we, we hope that this will not just be for uh, COVID, but even in post-COVID, we will have a national referral system all over the Philippines connecting the different hospitals, LGU, for access and even for financial services that are needed by the patient. Well, congratulations sa uh, USEC uh, dahil sa totoo lang po, sinusundan po talaga namin yung capability na makontak ng One Hospital Command Center at kanina po, pinadinig naman namin na sumasagot po ang 1555. Hindi gaya ng siguro mga one month or two months ago na busy ang lahat. So congratulations, um, Yusek Vega. At uh, again, ang reminder po natin sa ating mga kababayan, kung na nais nyo pong malaman kung sa kayo pupunta, tumawag lang po kayo sa mga numera ng One Hospital Command Center dahil kung hindi po talagang mangyayari sa inyo na baka mapuntahan ninyo, e eh, puno na po yung COVID bed allocation nila. So tawag lang po sa One Hospital Command Center. Kasama rin po natin, maraming salamat Yusek Vega. Ngayon, si Dr. Gloriani, siya po ay uh, isang miyembro ng uh, um, uh, DOST Vaccine Expert Panel, Dr. Nina Gloriani. Mamang tanong ko po, 
Dumating na yung ating 15,000 trial order para sa Gamalaya Sputnik V. Pero pagdating na pagdating, eh may balita na tila hindi po inaprubahan ng Brazil na nasa top 5 in terms of COVID cases itong Sputnik V. So, paano po natin may explain yung desisyon ng ating expert panel group na payagan at yung desisyon ninyo na ligtas at epektibo ang Sputnik V. The floor is yours, Dr. Gloriani. Yes, Magandang hapon, Secretary Roque at kay Ambassador at kay Yusek Vega at sa lahat po. Uh, ang uh, Gamalaya COVID vaccine, Sputnik V po, ay in-evaluate ng Vaccine Expert Panel very thoroughly for safety, immunogenicity, and efficacy. In fact, nakapag-release na po kami nung, nung uh, yung uh, information about that sa DOH bago po nung pinag-uusapan nila ang pag-roll out nga nitong unang 15 to 20,000 doses. So malinaw po actually marami po kaming hininging mga datos na pinadala naman nila like yung nyari sa safety. Uh, sinabi nila na meron nagkaroon ng mga ganitong adverse events, may namata, hiningi po namin lahat ng datos na yon At Binigay po nilang lahat yun. So in fairness po, it was the most comprehensive uh, parang set of documents that we received from these vaccine uh, companies. No? So ngayon, yung issue po naman dito sa Brazil, uh, akala po nga po ang Brazil ay may ginawang pagsusuri experimentally tungkol dito sa sinasabi nilang nagre-replicate yung virus pero binasihan lang po nila ay yung mga datos na merong sinasabing threshold, I don't know kung ma paano ko po ma-explain yun in a not technical way, yung threshold ng posibleng merong konting replicating viruses pero hindi necessarily nakita yon So yun po ang pinag-uusapan, mukhang na misunderstand po nung Brazil yun, but of course we are closely monitoring ano magiging uh, uh, explanation on both sides. Pero sa palagay namin, wala pong issue. Kasi yung mga ibang mga countries, uh, at least we have three, in real world conditions, wala pong naging problema sa safety or even sa efficacy nitong mga bakuna na ito. So, masusay po natin susundan. Ano talaga ang uh, mukhang mayroong pong uh, hindi nagkakaugnay din sa... sa hanay ng mga nasa Brazil kasi meron din po mga espesyalista, mga immunologists and other scientists na nagulat na may, mukhang may hindi naintindihan dun sa mga dokumento ng Sputnik V. Yun po, Secretary Roque. At Dr. Gloriani, di ba po sa lahat ng bakuna na pinag-aralan ninyo, parang Sputnik V lang ang pinuntahan mismo ng mga miyembro ng expert panel yung manufacturing facility. Tama ba ho ito? Ah, hindi, hindi, po, hindi po kami pumunta dyan. Ah, uh, hindi po. Si Ambassador kami pumunta. Ah, okay, okay. Maraming salamat po. Okay, now um, bago tayo magpatuloy, no? just uh, yung computation po at 700 beds at 70% utilization, kung gagawin po yung 1,148 total beds, ang utilization rate po ay bababa po ng 42.68. Okay, pumunta na po tayo sa... Pero Dr. Gloriani, may isa pa akong tanong sa inyo. May mga kritiko na nagsasabi na mas malala para ang Pilipinas kesa sa India. Tama ba ho ito? Naku, unfair naman po yan. In fairness, ha, ang ating uh, mortality rate ay mababa. Maaring tumaas ngayon and we uh, attribute that to the variants po. So, medyo naging lax din po ang ating mga mamamayan. Yan yun, nung nag-umpisa yan. Kasi tinignan din po namin, no? uh, sinusundan namin, nag-flatten tayo ng, ng epidemic curve. Tapos by uh, February, March, ayun, umakyat na naman po. Kasi... Well, marami na rin pong naging lax. So, I, 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 I think that is unfair to say that. And siguro, hindi naman din ano, kasi yung sa India naman, nangyari yung nangyari dahil po siguro yung kanilang mga religious festivities tapos yung kanilang double variant ngayon na we hope wala pa po sa atin. Mukhang ma malakas yung tama nung double variant na yon in terms of higher-higher talaga po ang transmissibility niya at base do sa mga naging press releases ng kanilang mga eksperto actually kagabi no sinasabi na kahit mga bata ay uh, medyo severe medyo ibang klase po sigurong variant ito 
than what we would normally get from yung UK, yung South Africa. Medyo kakaiba po. So, uh, eh, hindi ko po makakumpara yung Pilipinas sa ito nangyayari sa India. Sorry last po. na, last na, ma'am, no? Uh, meron pong report na isang pulis na namatay matapos siya maturukan ng Sinovac. Meron na ba hong ebidensya na yung pagkamatay nitong pulis na ito ay dahil po sa Sinovac? Ay, iimbestigahan po sir yan ng ating NAIPIC kasi yun yung nag, uh, agency natin, National Adverse Events Following Immunization Committee, natitingnan niyan. Well, hindi po natin ina-expert na kahit sino na nabakunahan ay mamamatay. Maari pong meron yan ibang kondisyon na nakapagdulot nung ano, yung ngari to be a heart attack or something, pero hindi po related. Marami. Pero, uh -oh. itinan po. Maraming maraming salamat, Dr. Nina Gloriani, Department of Science and Technology, Vaccine Expert Panel Head. Pumunta na po tayo sa ating open forum. Yusak Rocky, please. Yes, a good, good afternoon, uh, Secretary Roque, sa ating po mga bisita. From NJ Blanca Flor of Daily Tribune, President Duterte signed the 1.3 billion pesos uh, free Wi-Fi project into law in 2017. Will he include an update on the project in his last State of the Nation address uh, this July. Well, I have a personal interest po dito sa libreng Wi-Fi dahil ako po'y naging pangunahing utor ng libreng Wi-Fi na batas no? uh, noong 17th Congress. At ang uh, tapatan lang po uh, mula noon hanggang ngayon, eh talagang uh, medyo nakakabahala po yung bagal ng pag-implement itong uh, libreng Wi-Fi. No? Sa katunayan po, dapat magbibigay po tayo ng 120,000 na libreng Wi-Fi site no, sa buong Pilipinas at mga 10,000 lang po ang meron tayo ngayon. No? Kaya nga po yung mga tanong dito tungkol sa di umano, itong foreign contractor neto ay nagpasok ng mga imported component na undervalued at na tagtangkapan na uh, manuhol, well, ganito po ang posisyon natin dyan. No? Yung kontrata pong yan ay pinasok pa sa panahon ni uh, uh, dating acting secretary uh, Yusek Rio at ito po ay uh, in cooperation with uh, UNDP. Now, we had high hopes po dahil nandiyan naman po yung mga multilateral uh, agencies dyan na mabilis yung rollout. No? Pero mabagal nga po. No? And with this latest controversy, ang position po talaga ng uh, um, presidente at ng DICT ay itigil na yung involvement nitong uh, current contractor na foreign contractor na ito at ibalik na yung mga pera na naibayad na sa kanila dahil po pwede na pong ipagpatuloy yan ng ating uh, DICT. Yung mga panahon po yan na uh, tinuloy yan dahil nga po wala pang kakayahan yung ating DICT na DICT mismo magpatayo nitong mga uh, libreng wifi sites na ito. Pero ngayon po, eh, may ganyang kakayahan na mag-rollout ang DICT at sa katunayan po na sa taong 2020 alone, eh, nakapag-install po ang DICT City ng 500% more Wi-Fi sites compared dun sa mga total na in-install ng itong foreign contractor na ito from the year 2015 to 2019. So, ang, uh, ang uh, current status po niyan, well, bilang isang pangunahing utor ng batas, syempre po, hindi tayo happy. Kinakailangan, ang pangako natin, libreng Wi-Fi sa lahat. Dapat magkaroon pa rin ng katuparan sa administrasyon ni Presidente Duterte and we have one year to go. And considering na 10,000 pa lang sites po ang natatayo out of 120, kailangan double time talaga. Pero with the recent performance of DICT na 500% ang kanilang mas maraming sites na naitayo compared to the past five years, no? 2015 to uh, To be accurate, no, ako nawala na, but I think for the past uh, five years, eh, we have confidence po na kung hindi man maabot yung 10,000, eh, close to 10,000, eh, makakabit natin. Kasi po, talagang yan po yung inaasahan lalong-lalo na ng mga millennials sa Pilipinas at importante po ang Wi-Fi talaga na isang human rights na po yan, karapatang pantao na po yan. Ang tawag po dyan, a eh, right to connectivity. So, asahan nyo po na habang uh, nakaupo pa si Presidente, siya naman po ang nag-certify urgent ang batas na yan, kaya naipas ako ng mabilis po yan sa mababang kapulungan, eh titingnan naman po natin kung talagang mapapatupad natin yan. No? 10,000 sites, 10,000 sites installed, um, 120,000, so 110,000 sites left to go. Pero sa bilis naman po ng galaw ng DICT ngayon, we have confidence that we can meet at least close to the target if not 110,000 more sites. Second question po niya, the BOC uh, caught uh, speedcast 
the contractor daw po has to import the telco equipment needed for the Wi-Fi project. Uh, undervaluing its shipment and bribing customs workers to get away with it. As far as Palace is concerned daw po, should the government suspend or kick out Speedcast from the project for uh, allegedly violating uh, customs laws? Yan po ay iimbisiga ng the ICT. Pero syempre po, may pinaklos na tinatawag ang ating uh, Customs and Tariff Code na meron ding kriminal na parusa doon sa mga lalabag sa Customs and Tariff Code at kasama na po dyan yung mga naga undervalue no Kasi technical smuggling po yan kung naga undervalue Pero gaya ng sinabi ko po kanina, eh talagang hindi po happy ang gobyerno sa performance nitong ating contractor. Pasensyahan na po. No? But as an author of the free Wi-Fi law, di po katanggap-tanggap no? na many years after we passed this into law, eh, 10,000 sites pa lang ang uh, naikakabit. Uh, so, I think ang position po ay uh, humak gumawa na nakakbang ang DICT na um, ibalik na nga po yung mga sobrang bayad na naibigay dyan sa foreign contractor na yan bayaran sila sa mga na-install nilang site pero ngayon po mas mabilis pa ang DICT mag-install ng mga libreng wifi site yung third question po nila, the, the heads of uh, the Senate Committee on Public Services and the House Committee on Good Government and Accountability have expressed their intent to prove the Wi-Fi project over alleged smuggling, bribery, and negligence on the part of the DICT with the palace launch its own investigation. Yes, it's being investigated now by the DICT and we support any further investigation to be conducted by the legislative branch of government as part of their oversight functions. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, punta tayo kay, maraming salamat, Yusek. Punta tayo kay Mela Lesmoras, please. Hi, good afternoon, uh, Secretary Roque at sa ating mga guests po. Uh, Secretary Roque, unang uh, question lang po on OFW concerns. Uh, sa Malacanang side, ano po kaya yung latest orders ni Pangulong Duterte para nga ma-ensure yung kapakanan ng ating mga kababayan abroad uh, like sa India and other countries may COVID-19 surge and even sa Hong Kong may nakaambang forced COVID-19 vaccine uh, requirement po? Well, unang-unang po, no? um, we ask our um... OFWs, of course, na sumunod po doon sa mask, hugas, iwas kasi yan lang po talaga ang sandata natin. Pangalawa, um, naghahanda na nga po tayo nung uh, mga hakbang para sa repatriation, gaya ng sinabi ni uh, Ambassador Rabon Bagat Singh, pero I think they will have to be a minimum number, di ba po, uh, Ambassador, no? para tayo maka-charter ng eroplano no? at iiwi sila. No? At siguro po, it will be sometime in the future kasi the total ban is until the 14th. Pero that's only like, what? 12 days to go, 11 days to go, matatapos na rin yung ban. Pangatlo po, um, uh, iniingganyo po natin ating mga OFWs na uh, magpabakuna na rin po sa, uh, kung nasaan man sila. Kasi alam ko po, ang pagbabakuna naman ay sinasako pang lahat. No? We are not safe until everyone is safe. No? Yan po ang moto sa buong daigdig. At pang-apat po, ay meron naman po tayong... Uh, Um, consular at iba pang assistance na binibigay para sa mag magkakasakit at babawian ng, bu ng buhay. No? Napakalaki po ng ginagastos natin ngayon para sa pag-uwi ng mga OFWs natin na nawala ng trabaho at handa pa rin po tayong iuwi ang lahat ng gustong umuwi, lalong-lalo na yung mga um, nagkasakit na pero siyempre po, no, may limitation, kinakailangan ma-observe muna yung uh, mandatory uh, uh, quarantine uh, period bago po ma-repatriate. No? So yan po, oh, wala pong tigil at uh, nung last time po, sinabi ko nga po, halos 10 bilyon na ang ating nagastos uh, para po tulungan ang ating mga OFW sa panahon po ng pandemya. Opo. And may sec uh, second question, Secretary Roque, on COVID-19 vaccines po. Meron po kaya tayong uh, specific date na inaay na ito nga pagdating nung uh, mas malaking bulto ng Sputnik V vaccines? And idagdag ko lang, uh, Secretary Roque, kasi uh, dati po nasabi ni Pangulong Duterte na ang preferred vaccine niya ay from China or Russia. Ngayong uh, malabo pa yung detalye sa um, Sinopharm, uh, magpapabakunab na po kaya si Pangulong Duterte using uh, Sputnik V naman po? Sa una, tanongin natin si Ambassador, no? kasi ang dumating is 15,000 from the initial 500,000 or, ay hindi pala, sorry po, si Ambassador pala is from uh, India. No? So anyway, ang date po, alam ko, it's within the month of May. Um, di ko lang po na may moria kung kailan, no? pero importante po na magkaroon tayo ng trial order kasi negative 18 to 20 Celsius po ang uh, uh, temperature requirement ng uh, Um, Sputnik ng Gamaleya V. No? Kaya po, sa Metro Manila, 
ibibigay po yan. Bukas po, magkakaroon tayo ng uh, on-the-site briefing sa Paranaque, isa po dun sa syudad na kung saan gagamitin po nila itong Sputnik V. So, Mayor Olivares, um, kasama po namin kayo bukas. Opo, and sa pagbabakuna lang po, sir, ni Pangulong Duterte, may chance kaya ko po na siya. Sputnik V po. I'm happy to announce that finally, I am allowed to uh, attend the meetings with the President in person, and tatanungin ko po siya mamaya if he will now consider Sputnik V. Opo, panguli na lang, Secretary Roque, so ibig sabihin po ba may talk to the people mamaya? Meron po, meron po. And I'm looking forward oh. to it because uh, isang buwan po ako hindi naka-in-person attendant sa mga talk to the people. Okay, salamat po Secretary Roque at sa ating mga guests. Salamat Mela. Punta tayo kay Yusek Rocky, please. Yes, uh, okay Secretary, um, tanong mula kay Chris Jose ng Remate, Remate Online. Paki-clarify daw po and expound yung sinabi nyo last Friday that food and personal care establishment can operate beyond 10% capacity if they comply with the uh, JMC number 21-01 or 2021 daw po ito. I think joint memorandum circular ito. How hard it uh, is it to comply with this circular? Pahingi rin daw po ng examples. Hindi naman po mahirap yan. No? Uh, Unang-una, kinakailangan lahat po ng regulatory uh, requirements ay, uh, at registration ay complied nung uh, establishment. No? Um, kasama po dyan mga mayor's permit, mga DTI SEC uh, registration or DOT accreditation. Pangalawa po, dapat gumagamit sila ng staysafe.ph or kung anumang uh, contact tracing tools na integrated sa stay safe. No? So importante po yan. Pangatlo, kinakailangan uh, meron silang kakayahan at napatunayan ng kakayahan na magpatupad ng minimum health standards. Kasama na po yung limitation sa seating at saka yung sa ventilation. Importante-importante po yung ventilation. Yung engineering alteration uh, ng establishments to promote ventilation. At uh, meron po kasing certification process yan. Kung meron talaga silang napatunahin ang kakayahan na, bibigyan sila ng safety seal. Kaya nga po ang sinasabi natin sa ating mga kababayan, let us patronize po yung mga establishments na meron ng safety seal. Dahil napatunayan na po yan na may kakayahan silang magpatupad ng minimum health standards. Okay. Yung uh, second uh, yung susunod pong tanong ay uh, mula kay John Punsala ng ABS-CBN online. Das Malacañang approved daw po DFA Secretary uh, Loxin's uh, statement that China should get uh, the F out of the West Philippine Sea is the use of expletive, expletive a signal that the Philippines is changing its rhetoric and diplomatic tactic against Beijing. Hindi po namin pinaghihim masukan ang uh, karapatan ng malayang pananalita ni uh, Secretary uh, Loxin. Thank you, Secretary. Punta po tayo kay uh, Hana Sanjo, please. Hi, Secretary. Um, good afternoon po. Good afternoon, Hannah. Um, Secretary, yes, sir. Uh, yung grupo po ng mga nurses po, sir, inadaing po nila yung hindi po pantay yung sweldo po ng mga nurse 1 at nurse 2. Uh, sinasabi rin po nila hanggang ngayon, hindi pa rin po sila nakakatanggap na beneficyo po tulad ng mga food allowance. At hindi po nila na kung maaari ay makipagdialogo po sila sa Department of Budget and Management. Ano po 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 ng palasyo po, sir? Well, siguro si uh, Yusek Vega. I'm sorry, Yusek Vega, no? But I have to put you on the spot dahil uh, you're also acting OIC as um, Yusek for Finance ng DOH. So ang tanong po nila is... Uh, Again, number one, yung difference ng sweldo sa nurse one and nurse two, at saka yung hindi natatanggap na, anong allowance? Food allowance? Food allowance and hazard pay. And, and hazard pay. Yusek uh, Vega? Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Hannah, for uh, the, the, the query. Ano? Alam nyo yung uh, starting position talaga ng nurse one, uh, as uh, abided by uh, DBM because of the Supreme Court ruling, uh, nurse 1 becomes uh, from 11 to uh, salary grade 15. Ito po yung, ano, ito po yung uh, uh, victorious na yung pagpasok ng nurse 1 entry level. Pero uh, na-distort po yung uh, 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 pay grade nila kasi halos pareho na sila ng nurse 2. Ito yung uh, sinasabi ng, uh, ng Department of Health na we need to adjust the uh, nurse 2 position uh, into a higher level grade para hindi naman sila pare-pareho ng nurse one. So yung um, ang yung aming ano ngayon proposal for uh, a higher salary grade for nurse two is with DBM right now kasi hindi ka agad ma 
magkaroon ng uh, resolution dahil uh, kailangan nga daw sabi ni sabi ng DBM a legal basis to do that and we're also writing um, the uh, Senate committee sa uh, Congress sa uh, both houses para malaman din yung ano situation wherein uh, the nurse too should have a higher grade position and that is the position na actually ng Department of Health na tap dapat mataas ang uh, mas mataas ng uh, uh, salary grade yung nurse to, nurse to position ayun naman dun sa uh, food allowance kung uh, lahat ng mga regional centers at saka re regional health offices at saka regional centers po under the Department of Health oblig eh, binaba na ho namin sinapalat na namin yan since last year yung uh, food allowance pero yung sa corporate uh, facilities uh, uh, lalong lalo na dito sa uh, Metro Manila Heart Center Kidney Institute uh, gusto ho nila ang oblig ang disbursement ho noon yung yung lalo na yung food uh, food uh, uh, food provision into a uh, food allowance so sinasabi na po namin to na uh, sinabi ng COA sa amin na kailangan talaga may imprimatur ang president for uh, converting a uh, food provision to a food allowance. So ang sinulatan na ho namin yung uh, uh, office of the uh, executive secretary po tungkol nga dyan. And uh, secondly, uh, we have already uh, uh, talked with the Alliance of Health Workers na sinabihan po namin that the only way to do that uh, for uh, provision to cash would be uh, uh, through the uh, 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 executive secretary, through the president. So yun yung ano ngayon. These are the uh, 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 issues pending. Uh, and for the hazard, uh, alam nyo, yung since last year, nabigay na namin yung hazard. Hazard and uh, even the special race allowance. Tapos na yun. But uh, what we are asking for DBM right now is the uh, uh, hazard pay from uh, January to uh, June of this year. So we're asking uh, a budget for that because uh, hindi na kinaya ng balik ba, uh, bayanihan too. So uh, we're hoping that we will be given that provision from DBM. So ano na ho namin, we can actually easily uh, download uh, the uh, uh, yung hazard pay uh, uh, and the uh, uh, special risk allowance. All right, thank That's you. Uh, thank you, Hannah. Uh, Yusik Vega, no need na po ba na... Uh, magsagawa pa ng uh, dialogue yung Philippine Nurses Association with the DBM po? Uh, uh, we, we had a, a dialogue uh, last Saturday uh, per, with the Nursing Association and uh, uh, they invited DBM pero what in DBM doon? So probably they will ask uh, DBM to, uh, to honor their uh, invitation the next time around. All right, thank you, Yusek Pega. Um, Secretary, uh, meron pong tanong dito. Um, is there, like Ellie Ambassador said, they cannot donate excess vaccines to the Philippines because of contracts with pharmaceutical companies? What are the options of the government? So far po, uh, we may have to talk to the manufacturers to allow it, no? Kasi it was their condition, no? But we'll see po, anything can be uh, agreed upon naman po, no? Sir, last question ka na lang, sir, regarding dun sa, sa Hong Kong, sir, na uh, mandatory po na kailangan yung mga OFWs, kailangan po nila magpa-vaccinate no, ng COVID-19 vaccine. Sinasabi kasi ng consul na parang sinisingle out lang po daw yung mga OFWs natin. And sinasabi din ni Foreign Secretary Luxin, dapat lahat ng nationality, hindi lang Filipino. Ano po position ng Philippines po ito? Sinasabi din ng dollars, sir, hindi daw sa hindi sagot ang OFW sa plan ng mandatory ng covid 19 vaccination ng Hong Kong sa foreign domestic workers po. While well, we go with the statement of uh, Secretary Luxin, of course, no? Alam niyo po, ang uh, Equal Protection Clause is not just a provision in the Philippine Bill of Rights. It is accepted already in the International Covenant and Civil and Political Rights. At uh, sakop po ng kanyang applicability ang Hong Kong. So sana po, wag i-single out ang ating mga Filipino OFWs. Bagamat, we recognize yung sovereign um, prerogative na i-require ang Bakuna. Let me tell uh, everyone po na we have an early 1905 case na sinustain po ng Korte Suprema ng Pilipinas ang mandatory vaccination against smallpox as forming part and parcel of police power. Pero pati po ang exercise of police power, it must be done in a manner na lahat po ng tao ay sasakupin. Huwag naman pong magkakaroon ng singling out. Thank you, Secretary. 
Maraming salamat po, um, Hana. And Hana, um, buti na lang nandito si Yusek uh, Vega. Actually, ang request ko lang po, yung mga factual questions ay ipadala nyo po ahead of time because I would not have known how to answer your question. Buti na lang po nandito si uh, um, Yusek Vega. So please submit po ahead of time your factual questions para mapadala natin sa appropriate line agency. Okay, we now proceed with uh, y Yusek Raki, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Secretary. Uh, tanong mula kay Laila Salaberry of Inquirer para po kay Ambassador Bagaching. Uh, could you provide lang daw po updates sa COVID-positive Filipinos in India? How are they doing and what kind of health care are they receiving in light of the crisis in the country? Uh, salamat, uh, Yusek Raki. No? So far, we have uh, received about 73 cases uh, COVID-positive na Filipino dito sa atin. And uh, sa tulong ng PhilCom, what we have done is to create, uh, well, uh, provide them all the information and the numbers that uh, they can communicate with the embassy. Important is access and the uh, lines of communication are open. So they can get in touch with us through Facebook and then our email address. And uh, PhilCom here have uh, put up a chat group. And uh, because of that, sa tulong ng uh, DFA, we have uh, arranged a system where yung mga COVID support group ang tawag dyan, in terms of medicines and uh, supplies and uh, food requirements, we can uh, address the issues. To, kasi napakalaki ng India. You know, uh, you, it will take you two and a half hours to fly from Delhi to Chennai. So we have uh, uh, satellite groups of Filipino communities. At nag-detect siya, nag-chat group kami, sinasabi, ito ang sitwasyon ng isang Filipino. So yung mga Filipino sa lugar na yun ang nagtutulungan and uh, uh, the, the embassy provides as much support as we can uh, on our own. But uh, we have the go signal from the DFA that uh, we had a town hall meeting last Friday with the Filipino community here. nag usap usap sila. At nakita naman ng DFA ang pangangailangan ng ating mga kapapaya. Tanda naman tumulog. Uh, so with that, very, very good uh, coordination and support ang uh, nakukuha namin from the PhilCom, the DFA, and the embassy. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, for Secretary Roque, Secretary Roque, how does Malacanang view the report that 25 billion in calamity funds from 2020 and 2021 were still unutilized as of uh, March? As these are still pending approval, why is this the case when uh, spending these funds is supposed to be urgent in this time of a pandemic? Well, unang-una po, sa ayon po kay Secretary Wendell uh, Avisado, and I will quote him, yung mga calamity funds pong yan ay re-release re re as the need arises. We cannot just release without any reason or justification. Yung natural calamities daw po ay hindi nangyayari sa isang beses lamang, so kinakailangan i-release po yan um, kapag naghumingi po no, in response to a particular disaster or national Na, natural calamity. Now, um, at syempre po, yung pag-release niyan, eh, meron ding approval ng ating presidente. Nasa Mayo pa lang po tayo. So, yung budget sa 2021, syempre po, nandyan pa yan. Dahil hindi naman dapat gasosin lahat, no? Dahil baka mamaya, yung ibang abriya mangyayari sa 2021, eh, wala na po tayong pondo, no? Now, si Yusek Halod naman po, who is head of NDRMMC, ay uh, kinontak din natin. At ang sinabi po niya in, re in response to the headline article sa isang periodiko ngayon, eh, sinama daw po kasi dun sa halaga na allegedly unspent ay eh yung budget for 2021 and as explained by uh, Secretary Wendell no eh syempre kinakailangan hindi mo gasusin lahat yan dahil yung calamity funds mo for 2021 is until December of 2021 pero ito po ang breakdown na binigay sa akin ni uh, Yusek Halad ang head po ng NDRRMC sa 2021 po 20 billion ang budget nila inclusive of 13 billion regular NDRRMF funds 5 billion Marawi Rehabilitation Fund 2 billion insurance premium no, for government assets against calamities. Ang naapruban po ng OP ay 2,818,792. Ang balanse po niya is 15,181,27. Now, uh, ang on process na ang on process po mga proyekto na popondohan ay 8.23 billion no? tapos meron din pa po silang identified need from effects of typhoon Kinta Roli Ulysses na um, 35 billion no? so makikita natin na in fact kulang yung natitirang pondo for 2021 for what is needed as a result of Kinta, Roli, and Ulysses of 31 billion. Pagdating naman po doon sa 2020, 16 billion po yung um, budget ng NDRMMC, nagkaroon po ng augmentation, naging 22 billion 
694-698. Less OP approved, 20 billion 771-925. Ang balance lang po nila is 2 billion 22. So parang bloated po yung nasa pahayagan na hindi po ginagastos na natural calamity funds. Siyempre po, hindi gagastos in lahat dahil kinakailangan mag-save ng pondo para sa darating na uh, calamity funds at Yun nga po, no? marami ring mga kinakailangan pa para sa Quinta, Roli at Ulysses. So, wag po kayo maalala, magagastos po lahat yan. Opo, yung second question po niya, what will it do to fast track daw po the release of the funds, especially since uh, it is relying on the 2021 budget to stimulate the economy? Let me correct you po, no? kasi as uh, Secretary Wendell says, the release of the funds, hindi po pinag-aawayan yan. It's been released to the appropriate agency. Ang appropriate agency po for the calamity funds is NDRMMC. Yung pag-release naman ng NDRMMC has to be in response to a specific natural disaster. So, at saka subject to OP approval. At nung mga, mga figures na binasa ko po, nagpapakita na wala naman pong delay na masyado. No? Siyempre po, may paperwork. Alam niyo naman talaga yan. Ganyan talaga sa gobyerno. Hindi ka pwede gumasos-gasos ng walang uh, compliance with the uh, COA requirements. No? Pero hindi po naman totoo yung lumalabas na balita na parabagang ang dami nang nangyaring abiria na andyan sa katutak na pera na hindi naman po nagagastos. Thank you, Secretary. Yes, Trish Tradov, CNN, please. Hi, good afternoon, folks, and to Yusek Bongbega and to Dr. Lina po. Sir, first lang po, ano, since you mentioned about foresight, but of course, this is on a different topic, I just wanted to ask where the IATF is in terms of um, planning or handling the COVID response in light of the new variants, because we understand there are some efforts to increase the number of beds, isolation facilities, but is the IATF already at the point of anticipating or, you know, having some sort of foresight? Um, uh, you know, it's a scenario that na may for example, in India, should worse come to worse, do we have a plan A or plan B? Have we or are we securing um, medicines and oxygen tanks already in case? of a worst-case scenario. I will respond to that first. Nakita nyo po na with the additional IC beds that we have, bumaba na po to 42% ang utilization rate natin. Although this is subject to verification kasi ako lang nag-compute. Kasi nga, sa datos ng, uh, ng uh, DOH, and let's uh, flash that on the screen again, eh, 700 pa lang ang ICU beds natin. This has been increased to 100. Now, are we going to stop at 1,000? No. We are proceeding to um, come up with additional ICU beds, as mentioned by Yusek Veda, Vega. And Yusek Vega, I will confirm that ako na on my own, eh, as a result of my own hospitalization experience, no, I'm pushing for at least 200 additional ICU beds. No? Um, so that's part and parcel of the foresight. Kasi nga, we can never say if what happened to India will not happen. Kaya nga po tayo yung nagta-travel ban ngayon. No? Pero ang warning nga po ng WHO, kinakailangan isama rin sa travel ban yung mga lugar kung saan mat mataas ang traffic involving um, passengers from India at kasama po dyan yung Middle East. So yan po ang problema ngayon dahil hindi naman natin po pwedeng iban ang mga bansa, ang mga biyahero galing sa Middle East, lalong-lalo na dahil ang dami nating OFWs doon. No? So, pero pinag-aaralan po ngayon yan. So yung ating, yung pagdadagdag pa, pagpapalaki ng ating healthcare capacity is the long-term plan right now because we all know that it's cheaper to invest in uh, health infrastructure rather than to close the economy muli. So I think that um, with the additional beds that we have um, um, uh, provided, no? I think pagdating po ng 14 at the end of the MECQ, there will be confidence in announcing another qualification uh, um, uh, another qualification for classification no? for um, Metro Manila and the surrounding provinces. Perhaps si uh, Yusek Vega could add to what mm. I just said. Ano daw yung mahakbang yes, uh, na ginagawa natin yeah, by yeah, way of foresight right. to, to address uh, an India-like um, pandemic? Okay, uh, thank you, Tricia. Thank you, uh, Spock, uh, Spock Harry. For, uh, for foresight, uh, you have to deal really with certain strategies on different platforms. The first is the suppression of the virus. I think the IATF is very well ahead in terms of making sure that uh, the virus will not spread, will not replicate to an extent that we will be, a hard, we will have, be having a hard time in terms of our capacity. Nakita naman natin na uh, we are always look into the uh, 
looking into the uh, angle that uh, if we have to do a uh, uh, general quarantine or uh, enhanced quarantine, this has to be based on the uh, data that we have on the ground. So foresight and the suppression means, uh, especially with the IATF, that they're always looking for data that the variants uh, should not spread, they should be contained, and the PDITR, especially for contact tracing, uh, isolation, and testing must be there. In other words, expanding the isolation, contact tracing. So I think the IATF has been always on that uh, strategy. The second strategy or the platform that we should look into also is in the uh, uh, health capacity, meaning to say the number of beds, the number of uh, isolation facilities and quarantine. I think in, for the longest time, we've been trying to adjust, uh, especially uh, since learning from the last pandemic, how we can best uh, improve our health systems capacity by improving on our infrastructure and making sure that we have the desired human resource and, of course, the, uh, the technology or, or the equipment for it. And I think uh, that the last um, uh, foresight that they're also looking and strategizing is really on vaccination. And you can see that the plans of the vaccine cluster is uh, well uh, with, with, in, 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 a, in a list wherein uh, they have been trying to program and plan for the different vaccines that are coming because um, uh, our vaccination can really start as, as much as we would like to do is the supply is there. And so, but they have been planning for this, I mean, uh, since last year. So in other words, uh, for me, uh, the IATF has always been on the forefront in terms of strategizing, uh, especially on those three fronts, on how best we can resolve this pandemic. Thank you, sir. So just a clarification, dun po sa nabanggit ni Spokes na um, another clarif uh, classification for NCR+. Plus. How likely is it that we're going to shift to GCQ um, after, May after May 14, given the higher number of beds or higher number of healthcare capacity by that time? We still have to uh, uh, make sure that the, uh, the number of cases has really decreased and that our uh, our efforts to suppress the virus is there and the transmission rate is below one or even even uh, uh, below uh, a, a minimum figure to make sure that uh, the virus the, the virus or the variant doesn't replicate so we will we'll, we'll see and uh, what what the trend would be at that time and the ITF will actually decide especially on the uh, uh, attack rate and of course, the two-week growth rate and the um, health capacity of uh, the uh, uh, the region or NCR. Thank you, Sec Vega. Sir, um, next question maybe uh, for Secretary Roque. Sir, see Ambassador Bagaching mentioned that, or to Ambassador Bagaching, po, no? um, he mentioned that the Barat Biotech can immediately ship out the vaccines once all documentary processes have been expedited. Um, what's keeping the processing of COCO vaccine documents long and Considering, sir, na may EUA na siya, especially ngayon na may directive din po si Pangulo na hindi dapat tumagal ng three days yung pagpuproseso ng mga dokumento or yung mga regulatory work po. Ambassador Bagatsing? Uh, yes, thank you. Well, uh, my information is that uh, there's still one document required by the FDA uh, to have a full approval no, uh, for the EUA of uh, Barat Biotech for the vaccine or vaccine. And the other requirement, I believe, was on the Department of Finance review on their pricing scheme. Uh, so uh, if those two hurdles are settled, then, uh, then the, the orders can be made and the shipments can be, uh, the shipments can follow. So yun, yun lang pong balita ko na regulatory requirements na kinakailangan pa nila tapusin. Pero sir, when, is, when do you see it happening? And 8 million, isang um, dadating po ba yun? I mean, probably this month. Well, as I said, you know, it's, it's a moving target. Eh. Uh, ang, ang guarantee lang sa akin is uh, once approval, full approval is secured, then we can roll out and uh, export the vaccines there. And the, the point is, you know, uh, here in India, anything related to vaccine, and no offense to anybody, anything related to vaccines, cures, medicines, etc., the process, the regulatory process is expedited no? so that approval is secured right away. And the bottom line, whatever medicines are out there, equipments that are necessary, it goes straight to the recipients, the patients, and the families who need this kind of medicines. So uh, just uh, just a point, Tisha, no? I feel on my secretary, just to give you a perspective here. 
From October last year to March, the cases of COVID here was 5.9 million. This whole month of April, the COVID cases was 6.9 million. In other words, in one month's time, uh, they had 6.9 million compared to six months from October to March, 5.9. So yan ang nakakabulaga. And they were really caught unprepared. Sabi nga ni Modi, this is once in a century crisis. So if there's anything, lessons that we can learn, just consider that. No? And the cases of death, from November to March, the cases of death was 40,800. In one month, this April, cases of death, 48,700. So you could just see how overwhelmed the, the healthcare services were. So, tuloy tuloy pa rin ang vaccine. Going back to your point, tuloy tuloy pa rin ang vaccine. Uh, importante talaga na one way or another, mas tengkan natin ang ating immune system through these vaccines. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Secretary Rocco, just one last question for UC General Sinas is retiring uh, um, this week, May 8th. Um, who will be the next PNP chief? Will the president be making the announcement soon? Will there be an extension? And sino po yung mga contenders natin ngayon? I know he has made a decision, but I'm not at liberty to announce anything unless I have the paper, the appointment paper. And this is a well-established practice of my office. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Spokes. Thank you very much, Trish. They go back to uh, you, Sakraki, please. Yes, thank you, Secretary. From Adrian Ayalin of ABS-CBN, may mga binuksang industriya under MECQ pero wala pang bakuna ang mga economic frontliners. Binuksan sila kasi kailangan pero paano daw po ang protection nila? Mas, hugas, iwas. At pagdating po ng bakuna, idagdag ang bakuna. Yung uh, una pong tanong ni Kylie Atienza ng Business World ay uh, nabanggit niya na secretary sa tanong ni uh, Laila Salaveria, yung unutilized fund. Pero ang kanya pong follow-up, in a tweet yesterday, former socio-economic planning secretary Ernesto Pernia said, the government's lack of sense of urgency has clearly uh, shown, in, shown in responding to and managing the pandemic. He said the health Health system hardly improved and pandemic response spending is the lowest in ASEAN. Wala ba po daw a sense of urgency ang administrasyon sa gitna ng pandemia? Does the administration plan to fast track the release of the unspent calamity funds? Well, una-una po, no? Um, hindi naman po talaga unspent calamity funds yan kasi meron po talaga nakareserba. Uditin ko po, nakareserba talaga yan dahil mayo pa lang may mga darating pang mga abirya. Now, pangalawa po, um, well, nakita nyo naman po yung expansion natin na ating healthcare capacity, gubagawa tayo ng modular hospitals, na-increase natin na ICU beds, at magpapatuloy po, po, pa po yan. No? Hindi po tayo titigil. No? At uh, pagdating po sa lack of sense of urgency, sa tingin ko naman po, dahil lahat po tayo ay meron mga kamag-anak na po pwede mag kasakit, ako nagkasakit na, hindi po naman tama na walang lack of certainty dahil lahat tayo nais nating um, to spare as many of our family friends, our, our family and friends from this uh, vicious virus. Thank you, Secretary. Okay, Melo Acuna, please. Good afternoon, Secretary. Uh, this is for you and for the good ambassador, Bagat Singh. Uh, do you see... Uh, Scenario similar to Australia where Australia barred Australian nationals from returning to their country from India. Uh, those who will violate will either be fined or jailed. Do you see such a situation in the Philippines? Well, alam niyo po, may ruling na tayo, no? Um, Manglapus, uh, Marcos versus Manglapus, na the right to return is a human right. Pero, it is subject to police power. So, yung ating quarantine restrictions has also been recognized by the Supreme Court as a valid exercise of police power. Pero sa tingin ko naman po, ngayon, yung ating travel one ban, which uh, applies equally to Filipinos, no, is a similar uh, measure adopted by the Philippine government. Kasi dati-rati talaga, dahil sabi ni Presidente, walang Pilipinong gusto umuwi na po pwedeng pigilan, eh, may exception tayo sa mga travel bans to allow the return of Filipinos. Pero pagdating po dito sa India, for the first time, wala pong exception. No? Pero, siyempre po, um, mananaig pa rin yung puso ng ating presidente para sa ating mga OFWs. At ang nakikita ko po, baka nga po makaka na yung ilang mga Pilipinong gusto maka pero subject to stricter quarantine dito sa Pilipinas, including full 14-day quarantine regardless of their PCR results. Yeah. 
Uh, Mr. Ambassador, there are 1,319 <laughs> Filipinos in your area of responsibility with 73 afflicted with COVID-19. What are the chances of seeing them returning to the Philippines? Well, as uh, soon as we heard of those uh, logistical difficulties, uh, including the travel ban imposed by our government effective until May 14, no? uh, um, and getting the go signal from Secretary Luxin, uh, we will do our best to, to bring them home. Uh, again, as I said, uh, the easiest way is uh, to commercial flights. And uh, once the Middle East lifts the travel ban, because anywhere you go right now from India, via Hong Kong, via Singapore, or even via Australia or the United States, you, 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 there are travel bans in these countries. So yeah. there is a de facto travel ban. So once these are lifted, these are the logistical nightmares we have to go through. Once these are lifted, then we can start a process of negotiations uh, for them to come home. Worst case scenario, we have talked with our defense attaché okay, and uh, airlines to uh, a, a, a military plane to to uh, to ferry our our, our Calabayans from here to Manila. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Secretary Harry. Uh, there are courses requiring practicum, like uh, those who'd like to become teachers undergo a uh, practice teaching. And nurses are deployed to hospitals, or would-be nurses are deployed to hospitals. Don't you think there will be some changes in the curriculum? Because it may, in a way, affect their training and education, Mr. Secretary. Well, I think it's case to case. In the case of young uh, medical uh, schools, they have been asked for resumption of uh, their internship, and of course, it is um, part of the national interest to make sure na meron tayong sapat na mga doktor, so pinapayagan po sila ng IATF. So lahat naman po na mayroong mga uh, valid na dahilan para ipag patuloy yung kanila mga internship, mga practice teaching, lahat po sila po pwedeng humingi lang ng permiso sa IATF. I see. Yeah, for uh, Undersecretary Vega, uh, Mr. Undersecretary, good afternoon. Have you noticed any turnover or the speed of turnover of doctors, nurses, medtechs, and other professionals in government facilities over the past 12 months? Uh, uh, thank you, Mel, uh, for the uh, the query. Uh, um, right now, what we're seeing actually uh, is uh, um, internal migration. Uh, coming from uh, the private sectors to the government. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a, a big difference in pay scale. No? Alam naman natin yan lahat. So uh, in, 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 um, in the last, uh, I think last year and even the last few years, we have seen this kind of a transition, an internal migration, mostly from private institutions to government because the, uh, the government uh, has a pay, higher pay, pay scale compared to the private. I see. So no problem with manpower. Uh, uh, right now, in terms of manpower, that that's really a challenge uh, because uh, not only are we dealing with uh, internal migration, but there is also external. Yung talagang pumupunta abroad uh, because they have already the contracts on and so forth. And uh, the, the the challenge really here, especially with uh, uh, in a setup or wherein you need specialized units, if you only highly skilled personnel. And, uh, you know, when, when you deal with highly skilled personnel like nurses and even doctors, they need to have some training. And um, uh, this is actually uh, uh, what some hospitals are doing right now to cope up with the gaps. Talagang they're trying to uh, put in the necessary alibaba, training in the intensive care units. And this will begin sila ng uh, CME units for this so that they can also, this will also be a... Uh, uh, Parang, um, a gauge whether they can um, uh, apply in a higher level uh, 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 a higher level position or even uh, go for uh, uh, work abroad or in in government so there's there's a very dynamic really with uh, uh, changes in in the human resource especially among uh, nurses and doctors here in uh, in the Philippines maybe next time we can come up with figures so that we will have a clearer picture uh, mr and the secretary yeah, I, I, I yes, we can do that though. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you very Secretary much, Melo. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Punta you. naman tayo kay Joseph Morong, please. Joseph Morong. Oh, habang, Secretary. Yeah, okay. Sir, Go ahead. Okay, Secretary. Ano? Uh, Go ahead, Dr. Okay. Okay. From uh, journaling to billing of uh, Manila Bulletin, 
Secretary Roque. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, has the President reached out uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping to demand the pull out of the Chinese ships in the West Philippine Sea and ease the tension? Will the President uh, consider revising his uh, calibrated and calculated uh, foreign policy on the West Philippine Sea and ask for outside help after China ignored the Philippines' protest against unlawful presence of their ships in our territory? Let me check that the President was ignored now. That's not true. Dat, <coughs> dati po, almost 200 ata yung mga barko dyan. Ngayon, kakaunti na lang po ang natitira. Kaya nga po ang pakiusap natin, eh, tuluyan na ang uh, lumisan sa lugar na yan. Now, let me also clear na yung pinag-uusapin ng natin ngayon, bagamat kabahagi ng Philippine claim to the Kalean Group of Islands, has never been in the possession of the Philippines. Para pong sabay yan, may claim tayo na hindi naman natin na-possess. Yung area po ngayon na, na kung saan nagtipon-tipon yung mga mangingisda, yan po yung area kung saan malapit yung mga isla na pinag-aagawan sa parte po ng Vietnam at ng China. Okay? Sigur, um, dapat nga po ngayon, papakita ko lahat ngayon yan, pero masyadong mahaba yung aking PowerPoint presentation, siguro po sa susunod na lunes, no? dahil bukas we are in Paranaque for the um, Gamalea um, vaccination. No? So, hindi po totoo na inignore ang ating presidente. Um, I do have some data here. Ha? Babasahin ko po ang data. No? Uh, Siyempre, hindi ko naman memoriado, pero uh, in response to the um, Philippine President's message to the Chinese ambassador, ito naman po ang uh, nangyari. No? And uh, sandali lang po. Ha? Um, ito po. Ha? Um, okay. Ang nangyari po dito ay mula po nung nagsalita ang presidente, um, ito ha, um, 220 po in May, yung mga, in March, in early March, uh, yung mga barko. No? Now, dahil nga po dun sa pag-uusap ni Ambassador Wang at ni Presidente, ay uh, bumaba po yung uh, mga numero. From 220, 136 po umalis. At saka yung second batch, another 65. So kung i-add nyo po yung 136 at saka 65, Hina ko talaga sa math, no? Dapat talagang... So, 109... Mga 100... 200 na yan, no? Um, ilan ba yun? 136 to 6 plus 65. Can someone please add? <laughs> 136 plus 65. That's actually 11, 4... 201 po ang umalis from the original 220. So wag po nating sabihin inignore ang ating presidente no kasi mga 20 na lang po ang natitira dyan, no? And I think that's um, 201 fishing vessels po uh, ang uh, umalis no and all because of the message of the president and the warm relations that we enjoy with China no. Syempre po inaasahan natin itong mga buwan ito na mas marami pang ang uh, fishing vessels na alis dyan. Nung sa natitirang kakaunti, we're still hoping na aalis po sila. Okay. Uh, yung second po niyang uh, tanong ni Jeneline ay para po kay Ambassador Bagatching pero nasagot na po niya ni Ambassador ito about dun sa assistance ng Philippines sa India at maging yung planong repatriation. Thank you, Secretary. Okay. Joseph Morong, please. Um, hi, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ambassador Dr. Gloriani. Um, I have a short question lang po for Dr. Nina. Uh, Dr. Nina? Yes, Joseph. Hi, sir. Hi, ma'am. Good, af good afternoon na po. Ano po, how are you doing? Ma'am, yun pong sa Sputnik lang, yung pong recommendation, uh, kanino po ito pwedeng gamitin? Um, is this beyond 59 or hanggang 59 lang po? Uh, beyond. 18, above. Wala siyang ano. Meron silang dato sa elderly. So, pwede po kahit mga hanggang uh, sa senior nga. Yes. <laughs> Sige, ma'am, ma'am. Salamat po for okay, your time. Okay. Uh, uh, Secretary Roque, can I go to USEC Vega, please? Uh, Dr. Vega, good afternoon, sir. Sir, uh, my question is uh, about your figures po. Yun pong nabanggit natin na mga figures ng increases sa ICU and uh, isolation beds. These are NCR figures, sir, no? And um, by May 14 po kaya, sir, how many um, ICUs and isolation beds and ward beds should we have uh, by May 14? Kasi uh, you mentioned 367 yung additional ngayon and we need to update the DOH uh, uh, data drop. And then plus 110 sa private and 120 sa tala. Um, 
by may po ilan po kaya tayo yung total natin um uh, thank you joseph and of that but to put it in perspective uh the hcur which is agri actually parang aggregate of uh, the sum utilization of the intensive care units uh isolation beds and the mechanical ventilators is now low it's 57% so me medyo ma maganda na yung uh, hcur natin from uh, uh the uh, uh ncr ang na nakikita namin ngayon uh with an increase in the number of beds for the intensive care units umabot na kami ng 1148 or additional of 367 compared with last month of 781 Okay? Pero on ground, the total number of patients that we have for uh, the uh, intensive care unit right now is 850 pa rin. Kasi matagal ang transition time nene. Eh. Tapos may pumapasok pa before they can uh, be uh, 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 discharged. So definitely we still have about mga 70-71% ang ating uh, Uh, HCUR dial doon sa mm -hmm. kung disaggregated sa intensive care units. Yes. But generally, we're now hitting 57%, alright? In terms of the number of uh, by May 14, in terms of the number of uh, added uh, intensive care units, we expect probably uh, 50 plus or minus uh, intensive care units to be added in our facil different facilities. That is assuming uh, doctor that the rates of infection remain or no? hindi siya tataas more than what we are having right now um yes yes right right uh, ganito kasi yan pag if at this present setup that we have in terms of this pandemic where in you average 8000 to 9000 ang aming comp computation through faster and reported by ATF is you need a minimum of at least 300 more ICU beds And we were able to do that at 367. However, okay. that's the minimum. To make sure that we have a buffer for this number of beds, you must hit 1,000, at least 1,000 beds for the buffer for this average number of new cases that we have. So, okay. ang ginagawa po natin, because putting up an ICU, it's, it's, it's something, it's, it's not an overnight thing. It, it, you need you need to prepare for it because these are specialized units needing technology, human resource, and definitely of a space that is very that would have the necessary um, um, equipment and of course uh, oxygen supply. Yes, sir. Um, sir, um, yung pung computation yung 367 na dagdag natin 110 private plus 120 from Tala. That will only give you 597 ICU so far. Yeah. So. We're not, saying, we're not saying, Joseph, the 367 is coming, 110 coming from the private. Wala ko pang, wala akong sinabing ah, figure. Sa, wala akong sinabing figure. The total, I'm only saying, the total number of ICUs that we were able to scale up and generate uh -huh. since last month is 367. To include mostly on the private, uh, public sector and some private. But wala akong, ano, I don't have the figures from ilan yung ilan yung uh, sa different. Oh, basta total yan, 367. Sir, by May 14, that's that the current level that we have for ICU, you know, because this is very critical for, for the patients. Does that give you a confidence na we can relax to GCQ by May 14 if we have this amount of uh, number of isolation, I know, uh, ICU beds. Does that give you, parang kaya ba natin mag GCQ given this number? Dahil ganito kasi yan, uh, if there is uh, an increase in the number of active na cases, maglalak step yung increase in the number of uh, uh, patients needing isolation and intensive care unit. So yes. the most important uh, factor that we have really, we should be doing is suppression of the virus, meaning a very aggressive uh, uh, testing, contact tracing, isolation. Because if we can suppress the virus, To even uh, with a transmission rate of less than one, then the number of ICUs that you would like to uh, uh, be, to be having is there. Because hindi po konte na lang yung ano eh papasok eh. So with the amount, with the uh, lessening or the decreasing amount of uh, of cases that we have in the next several days, mas maganda yon because uh, we are now better prepared compared with last month. 
Okay, sir, thank you for your time, Secretary Roque. Same question. With the current level of ICU, does that give you or the IATF the level of confidence to think of GCQ? Because you've always said that we have to balance, you know, economy and then health. Well, there is a reason po, no, why uh, we are, in fact, taking concrete steps to improve our healthcare capacity. Kasi itong healthcare capacity po is one important indicator for either the lowering or the um, 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 hiring of community quarantine. So okay. kung wala ka sa critical at kung wala ka man lang sa moderate, and right now, kung tama yung computation namin at 50%, ni wala ka sa moderate no? um, healthcare capacity utilization, then that's uh, one factor in considering a decrease in the community classification. No? Now, ang babantayan natin yung... Uh, two-week attack rate, daily attack rate, at yung r -not. And so far now, ang r natin is doing good. No? The world standard is one, and I think we have achieved that. No? So if we are able to maintain our r not, if we are able to maintain yung, yung attack rate na hindi classified as critical, and we are able to improve our healthcare capacity, then there is a distinct possibility pursuant to the formula adopted by the IATF that we would have um, a different uh, quarantine classification, but of course the IATF is a uh, collegial body, it will have to be made by the ITTF as a body. Different classification you mean GCQ, sir? Well, um, there's uh, basta po, um, ma-maintain natin yung ating r not at mapababa pa rin natin yung ating mga attack rate at magpatuloy po itong additional healthcare um, um, capacity natin. Eh, yan po naman, sang ayon sa formula, may warrant GCQ, but that's a decision to be made by the IATF as a collegial body. Sir, sa budget lang, si uh, Yusek Coven no, ng DOF, uh, yes. nasa laging nganda siya, and then he mentioned that um, $18.4 billion in utang natin, and out of that number is $1.2 billion uh, dollars allotted for vaccines. Now, he said that the uh, interest rate is 0.6 to 0.8% per annum. So would you be able to compute, sir? And can you give us the terms of payment? Ilang years po mabayanan itong 8.4? And by the end of that term, how much would we have owed this uh, multilateral sources and bilateral sources that he announced? Joseph, how I wish you asked that uh, from uh, the USEC in Laging Handa, but I'm not prepared to answer that now. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Alam mo naman, mahina talaga sa math, okay? Uh, uh, maraming salamat, <laughs> Joseph. Uh -oh. so, so yung Bayanihan 3 ba priority? Uh, wala pa pong na-issue uh, na... -issue, uh, na na um, uh, certification. Maraming salamat, Joseph. Okay, you. Um, Yusek Rocky, please. Yes, uh, Secretary. Uh, tanong ni, ni Raquel Baya ng PBS. Paano daw po ang procedure kapag mag-lockdown ng isang government agency dahil sa COVID-19? Kanino ya address ang letter for clearance since sa GSIS at QC ay may nasawi na due to COVID-19? Ang alam ko po, uh, wala naman talagang complete lockdown. Meron pong skeletal forces sa mga tanggapan ng gobyerno. Apo. From Marisal Halili of TV5, Israeli ambassador said they cannot donate excess vaccines to the Philippines because of contracts with pharmaceutical companies. What are the other options of government? Ask and answer na po kanina. From Eileen Taliping of Abante tonight, hinarang umano ng Nayong, Pilipi Nayong Filipino Foundation Board ang uh, plano na magtayo ng temporary vaccination center sa nakatenggang property nila sa Entertainment City kahit may endorsement na ang NTF at ni Department of Health Secretary Duque para sa planong walk-in at drive through vaccination facility sa sandaling ilarga na ang maramihang pagbabakuna laban sa COVID-19. Ang mga kumokontra daw po ay appointees umano ng Malacanang sa board. Ano daw po ang masasabi ng palasyo? Pagbibigay, alam ko na po ito kay uh, ES as our primus inter pares um, and uh, he would still have jurisdiction over um, trustees of uh, government-owned and controlled corporations. Okay, thank you, Secretary. Maraming salamat po. At uh, dahil wala na po tayong mga katanungan, unang-una, maraming maraming salamat to Philippine Ambassador to India, Ramon Bagat Singh, Sir. Maraming salamat po. Ang dami naming uh, nakalap na informasyon sa inyo. Maraming salamat kay Yusek Ripoldo Vega. As usual, uh, um, Yusek Vega, wag po sana kayong magsawa na maging guest sa aming pra press briefing. At kay Dr. Nina Guleriani, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, 
of the DOST Vaccine Expert Panel Head. Maraming salamat, Yusek Kraki. Maraming salamat sa ating mga kasama sa Malacanang Press Corps. At syempre po, maraming salamat sa inyong lahat, sa inyong patuloy na pagtangkilik sa ating press briefing. Sa kalam po na ating Presidente, Rodrigo Roa Duterte, ito po inyong spokes haring nagsasabi, kaya po natin to at malapit na po ang Merry Christmas. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat.